Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Know when the breath is coming in, know when it's going out. And try to stay focused right here. Don't let any other thoughts pull you away. Other thoughts will come into the mind. You can't help that. But you don't have to let them have any power over you. So you just stay with the breath. Try to make the breath comfortable as a skillful way of making it easier to stay here. And remind yourself of why you want to stay here. You need to train the mind. If the mind isn't trained, then even good circumstances can be destroyed by the greed, aversion, and delusion that grow out of control in the mind. So the mind needs taming, the mind needs training. You've got to keep that point in mind so that when any other thought comes in to pull you away, you don't get hoodwinked by it, you don't get fooled by it. And so in a way it's like you're putting up a battle here in the mind. You've made up your mind you're going to stay with the breath, and other parts of the mind have other ideas, and they're going to try to come in and pull you away in various ways. And you have to be able to fight them off from all sides. But this kind of victory is an important one. It's, it's the most valuable one there is. And we can win out over other people, beat other people in different games and in, in business and sports and other contests outside. But the best victory is the victory you have over your own mind the laziness in the mind, the other unskillful habits that you may have. You can't let them take over, because if they take over, they're not going to take you to a good place. They're like people who lure you and say, we're going to take you to a really nice vacation spot, and then you, when they get there you discover that the hotel has leaky roofs and the plumbing doesn't work, and they run off and they, you can't find them anywhere. In other words, the things that lured you there are not there in the mind anymore, and they're not nearly as attractive as they used to be, but you've already been hoodwinked. You've already lost out to them. So you've got to make up your mind. You want to go someplace that's really good, and this is how you do it. You train the mind. You train it through virtue. You train it through generosity. And especially you train it through meditation, the practice of gaining concentration, developing discernment in the mind. Because it's primarily the discernment that's going to enable you to win out over the other sides of the mind. You can use force of will for the time for a certain amount of time. But it's the sermon that makes you realize, okay, this really is important what we're doing here. We can't allow ourselves to give in. And so you do put up a fight. And John Mahabhava once said, someone came to him and asked him, what's the easy way to overcome laziness? And he says, well, there is no easy way. If it were easy, there'd be no laziness in the world at all. It takes effort, but it also takes discernment. It's the discernment that makes it easier. It makes you realize, okay, this really is important, and if you give in to that bit of greed or this bit of anger, it's going to lead to trouble down the line. And it's keeping that point in mind that makes it a lot easier to withstand the, the greed, withstand the anger. Because when they come, they come and they seem very attractive. And so you've got to be able to see through their disguise, and it's the discernment that allows you to see through it. There's a passage where the Buddha talks about the reasons that people have for being lazy and the reasons they have for for being industrious. And it turns out the external reasons are the same in both cases. For instance, say that you've just recovered from an illness. If you're inclined to be lazy, you say, well, I've just recovered from my illness, I don't have much strength, I better conserve my strength and not practice too hard right now. Whereas you can take the same situation and make it a cause for diligence, make it a cause for being industrious. Okay, you've recovered from the illness and you have no idea when it might relapse, but you've got this little bit of energy here right now. Use it well. Use it. Devote it to the path. Or there's a part in the mind that says, well, don't, don't try too hard. After all, remember, this is the middle path. Just put a little bit of effort in. But again, it's... When you go for greed and anger and delusion, they don't say, oh, just a little bit of greed, just a little bit of anger. You can go way out of bounds, and the middle path just disappears. So remember, when you want to do something good, there's no fault in really being devoted to it. If you want merit, okay, there's no, there's, it's, that's not counted as greed. That's counted as a, as a skillful intention, a skillful desire. If you want to be virtuous, if you want to be generous, if you want to gain concentration, these are all good desires. They should be encouraged. And you want to do them to the best of your ability, because after all, these things are the cause for happiness. And we don't want just a little bit of happiness. We want as much happiness as we can muster. And so that means that you make as much merit as you can. You be as virtuous as you can. Be as generous as you can. Put as much time into meditating as you can. So you get the highest possible happiness. So if you want large results, you have to make large causes. 
and to keep the causes large, to make sure that they don't get sabotaged by your other thoughts. You have to keep reminding yourself why you're here. Use your discernment to remind yourself what's skillful and what's not. Because there are things out there that you like to do, but they give bad results, and other things that you don't like to do but give good results. And You've got to use your discernment to help get over the, the difficulty of saying no to the easy things and saying yes to the difficult things, because the difficult things will lead to happiness, ultimately. So try to develop your sermon. And the discernment, where does that come from? It comes from your heedfulness, realizing that life is full of dangers. When we're born into this human world, things are not guaranteed to be easy. But we do have this power of our own choices. We can choose to say and do and think the skillful thing or the unskillful thing, and it has consequences. So if you're careful, you stick with the skillful side. So it says heedfulness is the basis for all discernment, it's the basis for all that's skillful in life. So try to develop the wisdom of heedfulness that keeps you on the path.